Welcome everybody to the demonstration today. When you're determining how you want to plan an item, the two tabs on an item card that are really going to be important to you are going to be the replenishment tab and the planning tab. On the replenishment tab, the first thing and the most important everywhere is going to be the replenishment system. So we have three options there. An item can either be a purchased item, a produced item, or an assembly item. What we put in this field really determines what the planning worksheet suggests. So if it's purchase, purchase order, and on down the road. What we pick in the replenishment system determines where else on this tab nav is going to look in terms of planning. So for purchased items, you have the ability of saying who you buy from. So we can default a vendor in here if you only buy from one specific vendor. If you have multiple potential vendors that you could buy from, on the Navigate tab, we can set up a vendor list that will have all your different vendors and give you the ability to put in a different lead time for each vendor. For any production order items, NAV is then really going to look at the routing number and bill of material number in the production section. So for routing, it's going to use that information to determine how long it takes you to make a particular order. And then for the bill of material, obviously it's going to use that field to determine any component items that it then needs to plan for because you've made a production order. For assembly items, we're mainly going to look down here to the assembly policy. You have two options in the assembly policy. You can do assemble to order or assemble to stock. So if you pick assemble to order in here, the planning worksheets really aren't going to look to this item to plan it because for assemble to order, everything happens on the sales order when you enter a sales order in. So if you're assembled a stock, that's really when this item would come into play on the planning worksheets because it would suggest specific assembly orders for you. So aside from the replenishment tab, we then get to the planning tab. The planning tab is where we're going to set all of our specific parameters for individual items. Everything that we fill in here really begins with what we pick for our reordering policy. Different reordering policies can work for different items. You don't have to go with one for your entire item list. We can have different reordering policies for every item in the system. You really get five available options in here. And as I click through the options, you'll see that the relevant fields will become available to me. Non-relevant fields will gray out like we have here with our reorder point parameters. So these are all grayed out right now, not accessible to me. So we've got five available options because we consider blank an option. So if the reordering policy is blank, that means that this is an item that you don't want NAV to plan for. So if you have special items in your system that you really need to make sure you're keeping a heavy eye on and you're doing all your planning for those, make reordering policy a blank and NAV simply won't worry about them. We can go with a fixed reorder quantity. And when we go fixed reorder quantity, what NAV's trying to do is it's really looking to the reorder point. So that's the point in inventory that you want to trigger a new order, and then it looks to the reorder quantity for what the size of that order is going to be. So here we're saying once my inventory is projected to go down to five, then I want you to suggest another order to the vendor for 100. We can also go with maximum quantity, which is similar but different. So maximum quantity is saying that I'd like to try and keep my inventory to maximum of 500. Once my inventory gets down to the reorder point, which is five, I want you to place another order for 500. And it's important to note that NAV's always looking at the projected available balance to come up with these numbers. So it's not going to wait until your inventory physically gets to five before it tells you to order. It's going to see that you're projected to be at five. So at that point, it suggests an order for 500. The most strict reordering policy is going to be by order. So you can see almost everything grays out for me when I go with that reordering policy. So whenever we go by order, every time you have a new demand requirement, so a new sales order from a customer, then NAV would suggest that you create an order on your supply side for that specific amount. It's important to note, too, that the order policy is always going to use hard reservations between the demand and the supply. So if I purchase 50 of an item to meet a sales order, I can only use that 50 for that sales order. So there is a hard reservation link between the inventory and the demand. The last reordering policy we get is lot for lot. 
So this option is going to use what we put in our lot accumulation period. So this right now means two weeks. And it's going to group your whole planning horizon into buckets of that size. So if I were to plan for two months from now to two months out, it would group that into four buckets of two weeks. And it would take a look at all the demand that's going to happen in those two weeks and suggest an order to meet that demand. In that example, we would get four order suggestions for two-week buckets of demand. With the lot for lot reordering policy, you can also decide if you want to take a look and pay attention to your current on-hand inventory with this include inventory checkbox. If it's checked, it will consider what you have on hand in inventory. Unchecked means it won't. And we also have the option for a rescheduling period. So what that means is if your demand changes within this two-week period or whatever you choose to put there, the planning worksheets would not show you any kind of change quantity or change reschedule message. It would go with what you had. Any changes in demand that happened outside of that two-week bucket, you would see a suggestion in the planning worksheets to change your orders. So for all the policies out there, except for order, you're also going to have the order modifiers tabs to further influence the suggestions NAV gives you. So minimum order quantity. This can be useful if maybe you're tracking an item by eaches, but you have to buy a box of it from the vendor. So maybe I have to buy this in a box of 25. So I can't just buy five from a vendor. I have to buy a box, which is going to be 25. So that would round your order suggestion up to meet the minimum order quantity. Same thing for maximum order quantity. If you want to limit your purchase orders to maybe full trailer or full truckload quantities, you can set a maximum order quantity in there. And then once any suggested order in the planning worksheets would get over that quantity, it would go into another second suggested purchase order. You're also going to get the order multiple. So for order multiple, that's going to be a number that really defines the quantity that purchase order or a production order is rounded up to. So for example, if your order suggestion from NAV is going to be 17, but I have an order multiple in here of 25, NAV would round that order suggestion up so that I'm ordering 25 from the vendor. All of these reordering policies also give you access to safety stock quantity, so the amount of an item you want to keep on hand just to make sure you can satisfy any extra demand or any unanticipated demand. So one thing we also talked about in the planning worksheets is that it can suggest transfer orders, but we've yet to really see how that can happen. In order for the planning worksheets to be able to suggest transfer orders for you, we need to turn on and start using what's called stock keeping units. So right now we're looking at an item record, but we can also create stock keeping units if we go to actions and create stock keeping units. We can create a stock keeping unit for every location in your system, every variant you may use, or a combination of both location and variant. And stock keeping units can really be thought of as like a mini item card. So I have a couple for this item created already. So to view those, we can go navigate and then stock keeping units. So for here, I have two stock keeping units, one for the blue location and one for the red location. We can edit these and see that it really is like a mini item card. We're going to get a general tab. We're going to get an invoicing tab so we can have different costs by different locations. But mainly, you'll have full access to the replenishment tab and the planning tab. So this stock keeping unit for the blue location I've kept all the planning parameters exactly how I had them on the item card. I want to make sure I purchase into my blue location. I want to purchase from vendor 50,000. And I want to use my lot for lot with two week buckets. But if we look at the red stock keeping unit, I want to handle this item a little differently at the red location. So at the red location, I don't want it to be a purchased item. I actually want it to be a transfer item. So once we have stock keeping units created, you'll have access to a fourth replenishment system, which is transfer. I then, once I say I want a replenishment system of transfer, I have the ability to say where do I want to transfer from. So I'm saying any demand at the red location, I want to supply that by a transfer order from the blue location. So in the planning, that would drive a couple things. That would drive a purchase to the blue location, then it would drive a transfer from the blue location to the red location. This can really be good when you want to track 
or use a hub and spoke type ordering model. So if you purchase into a central location and then distribute out to different locations, or if you manufacture at one location and then maybe transfer goods that you've manufactured into a distribution warehouse. That's a really good model for these stock keeping units. So that is a look at how the planning worksheets function and I think a good overview on the item cards and all the different planning parameters available to you.